The Seventh Tower by Garth Nix. Book Four, Above the Veil, Chapter 20. The crushing, breath-stealing darkness pressed down on Tal. He fought it as he struggled to climb, to find another handhold, to break free and into the light. Just in time, he remembered to close his eyes so that when he burst out, he was not blinded. There was just the welcome flash of color under his eyelids and the sudden warmth on his face. Slowly, Tal opened his eyes a fraction and climbed completely out of the veil to sit astride a long bronze pole that thrust out of the wall. Adris was still holding on to his sash. As the spirit shadow came into the sun, he let out a surprised gasp and then stretched and luxuriated in the sudden energy. I have missed the sun in the sky, he rumbled far too loudly for Tal's comfort. Look, there are clouds. There were many clouds, in fact. It was close to sunset, and the sun was shining red and low through a deep band of cloud on the horizon. Tal didn't look at the clouds for long. He was too intent on scanning the tower above. There were no more gargoyles or stone ornaments, only long bronze rods and the golden nets that were suspended beneath the rods, nets that held neophyte sunstones and Nerian jewels that slowly absorbed power and light above the veil. Tao wasn't interested in them today. He was looking for the keeper. There was a balcony not far above. That was where he'd seen the keeper last time. But it was empty now, nor was there any sign of movement on the walkway even higher up. Tao looked back down at the veil. It was strange to see it spread right across the sky. It looked solid, like black soil with the red tower growing out of it. If he didn't know what it was, he would never suspect that there was a whole world underneath. Right at that moment, a hand thrust out of the veil, fingers scrabbling frantically for a hold on the pole. Tal jumped with shock. Another, apparently disembodied arm followed, then Crow's head burst through. His eyes were wide open. Tal had forgotten to warn him about the sun. Crow screamed and flung one arm across his face. His other hand lost its hold. Desperately, his fingers flailed to regain it as his body teetered backward. Tal reached out and grabbed him around the wrist, and Crow gripped him with amazing panic strength. It was too late. Crow was already overbalancing. He fell backward. Tal let go, panicked himself, but Crow still kept hold. Tal's own handhold slipped, his grip broken. Together they fell into the veil, even as Tal threw out his other arm, screaming for Adris. They were in the darkness for only a fraction of a second. Tal felt Adris grab his arm with a familiar shoulder-wrenching suddenness. Then he was hauled back into the light. Crow came with him, almost wrenching his other arm out of its socket, until Adris reached down and pulled him up as well. Both of them clutched at the bronze pole as if it were a long-lost friend. It took a few seconds before either of them spoke. You should have warned me, hissed Crow. His eyes were still crinkled up against the sun. It is so bright. It's sunset, muttered Tal in his defense. Hardly that bright. Besides, I told you there was sun up here. Crow muttered something angrily, but Tal couldn't catch what it was. He kept a wary eye on the free folk boy. At least Mila was predictable in this sort of circumstance, he thought. He didn't know what Crow was thinking at all. Well, Crow said finally, let's call it even, shall we? Call what even? asked Tal, puzzled. Crow looked at him scornfully. Don't give me that pretend stupid act. Who did you learn it from, Ebbit? I don't know what you're talking about, Tal said. Sure, snarled Crow. Whatever you say. From now on, let's just help each other, all right? I thought that's what we were doing. That's what I want to do. Crow grunted. Carefully, keeping one hand tight on the pole, he shaded his eyes and looked up. Darkness, he swore. What's that? Tal looked up swiftly and groaned. Sure enough, oozing over the balcony was the keeper. Tal still didn't know what creature it was in Einir. The keeper had a huge, grotesque head with many eyes and a very wide mouth full of hundreds of tiny, needle-like teeth. 
Its body was snake-like, long and sinuous, coiling around behind that horrible head. It was bigger than Adris. Seek not the treasures of the sun, chanted the spirit shadow as it slid over the balcony. Its voice was high-pitched and screeching, awful to hear. I am the keeper, and none may pass here, save those who know the words. Tal stared up at it, expecting at any moment to be totally consumed by the panic he had felt in his last encounter with the keeper. But to his surprise, he found himself quite calm. His hand was already coming up, his sunstone glowing red as he instinctively prepared a red ray of destruction. Adra, stand clear, Tal ordered, his steady voice another surprise. Crow, if you can do anything to this thing, do it. I can if it gets close enough, said Crow. He was getting something out of the pouch on his belt, but Tal was too intent on the keeper to see what it was. The keeper dropped onto the rod above them, twining itself around as it lowered its head for the next leap, straight onto Tal. Tal kept concentrating on his sunstone. He fed it anger and rage, and the red grew deeper and stronger, swirling in the depths of the stone. As the keeper opened its too wide mouth and tensed to spring, Tal thrust his hand forward and released the pent-up power of a sunstone. A red ray, too bright to look upon, shot out, a thin sphere of light that punched through the keeper's head. Drops of shadow spurted out of the back of its head. It screamed and recoiled in pain and surprise. Tal's relief died as he saw the droplets of shadow leap from the bronze rod in the tower wall and fly back into the keeper. In a few seconds, the hole drilled by the red ray had closed, and the keeper was once again preparing to spring. None may pass here, hissed the keeper. Can you hold it still, shouted Crow. There was no need for shouting, but Tao understood why he was. No, yes, I don't know, he shouted back. Adris, grab hold of that thing. Adris had only been waiting for the word. He roared a battle cry and unleashed two bolts of shadow lightning at the keeper. More shadow drops flew. Then Adris was upon it, gripping it in a bear hug with his mighty arms. But its snake body was as quick to wrap around him, and Adris grunted as the thing began to squeeze. Its head lowered, too, and it bit at Adris's shoulder. Adris howled, squeezed even harder, and bit back. It's still moving too much, shouted Crow. He was getting up on the bronze rod now, intending to climb up to the next one where the two spirit shadows were wrestling and biting. He had a strange silvery bag in his left hand. Tal stared down at his sunstone. There had to be something he could do to immobilize the keeper. A variation of the hand of light. A rope. Something. Anything. 